Hi guys, today we are going to learn about radio wave propagation and modes of propagation. Also, we will uh, take cover on different layers of earth atmosphere. Okay, today we are, uh, today let's start with the atmosphere of earth. Earth atmosphere is into five main layers, the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and hexosphere. The atmosphere thins out each higher layers until the gases dissipate in space. There is no distinct boundary between the atmosphere and space, but an imaginary line about 62 miles, we can call it as 100 kilometers from the surface, called as Karman line, is usually where scientists say atmosphere meet outer space. Uh, that and we can say that the troposphere is from 7 to 20 km and the stratosphere is from 20 to 50 km, mesosphere 50 to 90 km, thermosphere 90 to 500 km and the exosphere above 1000 km. And the, uh, these are the basic layers of atmosphere. Let's start with the troposphere. In troposphere, we can say that uh, with the increase of height, uh, the percentage of gas components in the air will be constant. Water vapor components will decrease when height is increased and also temperature decreases uh, with the height. The stratosphere. Stratosphere is the second major layer of earth atmosphere just uh, above the troposphere and below the mesosphere. Okay, uh, I, and next one is ionosphere. The ionosphere is the ionized part of Earth's upper atmosphere from about 60 km to 1000 km, uh, a region that includes the uh, thermosphere and parts of the mesosphere and exosphere. We call that ionosphere. Ionosphere contains mesosphere, exosphere and thermosphere. Uh, now let's start about uh, talk about the critical frequencies. We know that critical frequency is the highest magnitude of frequency above which the wave penetrates to the ionosphere below which the wave will reflect back. Uh, reflect back. Uh, okay, uh, from the ionosphere, uh, ionosphere absorbs radiant energy from the sun and pr uh, produces ionizations. Ionizing agents are UV rays, alpha, beta, cosmic rays, etc. Uh, ionosphere contains several layers in it. Let's discuss deep about the characteristics of different ionized regions uh, in ionosphere. The first one is D region. D region is the lowermost region of ionosphere. It reflects very low frequency and low frequency signals absorb uh, MF and HF and also known as absorbing layer for short wave signals. The next one is normal E region. Narrow layer of ionizations, uh, we call it as Kennelly heavy side layer, can be observed in daytime only. The critical frequencies of E layer uh, lies in the range of 3 to 5 megahertz, and uh, which can be used for uh, transmission of uh, high frequencies and MF. The second uh, most one is uh, sporadic E region or uh, irregular region occurs in the form of clouds purely regional it may be observed in both day and night uh, house uh, it is a thin layer of high ionization density it is a thin layer of high ionization density okay uh, then next one is f layer f layer regions uh, are also known as apleton regions f layer regions contains f1 and f2 it, which is the uppermost ionization region uh, apleton region uh, being topmost layer highly ionized uh, some ionization remain uh, even after sunset I, uh, we, we, uh, we have discussed that uh, F layer is divided into two F1 layer and F2 layer uh, F1 layer formed by ionization of oxygen atoms uh, absorbs high frequency waves, uh, waves the critical frequency of this one is 5 megahertz to 7 megahertz and the second most one is f2 layer formed by the ionization of uv x-ray etc reflects high frequency waves and the critical frequency of this type of uh, waves are 5 to 12 megahertz now let's discuss about the radio wave propagation radio propagation uh, is the way radio waves travel or propagate when they are uh, transmitter from one point to another point and 
affected by the medium in which they travel and in uh, particularly the way they propagate around the earth in various parts of the atmosphere modes of radio wave propagation radio waves from the transmitting antenna may reach the receiving antenna mo uh, receiving antenna modes of propagation depending upon several factors like frequency of uh, operation uh, distance between tra uh, transmitting and receiving antennas etc uh, some of the modes of propagation are uh, ground wave or surface wave uh, uh, and the second one is sky wave or ionospheric wave propagation N next one is space wave propagation uh, the other one is tropospheric scatter uh, or we can call it as uh, for, uh, forward scatter propagation i will uh, talk about the ground wave propagation uh, the ground wave propagation is of radio wave propagation that uses the area between the surface of the earth and the Toposphere or toposphere of trans for transmission. The ground wave can propagate a considerably dis considerable distance over the Earth's surface, particularly in the low frequency and medium frequency portions of the radio spectrum. Because about ground wave propagation, ground wave propagation is a method of radio wave propagation that uses the area between the surface of the Earth and the toposphere for transmitting. The ground wave can propagate a considerable distance over the earth surface, particularly in the low frequency and medium frequency uh, portion of the radio spectrum. As, as you can see, the uh, propagation path in the uh, picture displayed here, uh, displays here uh, propagation of EM waves near earth surface. When the transmit and receive antenna are on earth there can be multiple paths for uh, communication if the transmit and receiving antenna are in line of sight we can all loss then the direct path exists the propagating wave is called as direct wave when em wave encounters an interface between two dissimilar media a part of energy will flow along the interface that uh, wave propagation is known as surface wave. At LF and MF, this is predominant mode for uh, energy transfer for vertically polarized radiations.